And here to help us manage down our debt is nationally recognized retirement speaker and best-selling author, Tom Hagna. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Steve. Great to be with you. Tom, I loved your book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy. I saw your PBS special. It was awesome. But before I get into my consumer debt, before I get into the st- my own state that I live in, Arizona's debt and whatever else state you're broadcasting from, and our United States U.S. debt, talk about the global debt I'm talking about worldwide. Give me a little idea of what we're looking at. Yeah, so look, I've uh, had economic commentaries here now in 2012, 13, 14, 15, and I've been pretty close to being right on the money, as we say, right, uh, with, with what the economy's doing. And now, you know, it's timely because the Federal Reserve just uh, raised interest rates the other day for the first time in, in almost a decade. And a lot of people think interest rates are going up. And I'm here to tell you, I don't believe interest rates are going to go up much, all right, for a very, very long time. Let's, let's first understand that the Fed doesn't set interest rates. The Fed sets overnight rates. They do not set the overall rates. So, mm-hmm. you know, when I talk about the economy, and, and I'll get into the global debt in just mm-hmm. a second, but I often ask people, you know, are you more concerned about deflation or inflation? A lot of people say they're more concerned about inflation. Mm-hmm. And if you really look at why, if we take a look at the money supply in this country, you know, the Federal Reserve has printed about $4 trillion of money over the last few years. And Remember what happens. Every time you print a dollar, the value of all the other dollars goes down. And so when you print this amount of money, you'd think that the value of the dollar would go down. And then when you go to buy something, it would take more money. That's called inflation. But that really hasn't happened. And the reason it hasn't happened is because there's two components to the inflation equation. The first component is the supply of money, which has gone up like nothing we've ever seen. And in normal times, that would not just be inflation. That'd be hyperinflation. That's what most people are seeing. But there's a second component. And that second component is called the velocity of money. It's how fast money turns over in the economy. And just like the supply of money's gone up like nothing we've ever seen, the velocity of money's gone down like nothing we've ever seen. There's no money velocity. So it's like we printed $4 trillion and we dug a big hole and we buried it. I can't even understand why we did that. But now interest rates have been low for a long time. We only had a quarter point raise in the Fed. I don't know how it's going to be. It's going to affect mortgages. It's going to affect car loans. Uh, credit card, but maybe. really, maybe not that much. Maybe, because see, the Fed sets the overnight lending rate. Now, mm-hmm. traditionally, rates go up in concert so that you'd think if they raise it 25, everything else mm-hmm. would go up 25, but that's not always true. Sometimes the yield curve flattens mm-hmm. where the longer-term rates actually come down, or as it goes up, they stay the same. That's called a flattening of the yield curve. There's even times when it does inverted yield curve mm-hmm. where the short-term rates are higher than the long-term rates, and that typically portends a, a recession or something. But So, look, we're not not going to see any inflation until we see this money velocity pick up. But mm-hmm. besides that, there are several huge deflationary pressures that I've been talking about for the last four years that haven't gone away. And the first thing is debt, like we talked about, record global government debt. There's over $57 trillion of government debt. Our country is 18 going on $19 trillion in debt with almost $100 trillion of unfunded obligations. Now, what I always ask people is, what is debt? All debt is is taking from the future and spending it today. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. We're in football season. So somebody got the red zone package. They want to watch all the the football games on the Mm -hmm. red zone package, but they got a crappy old TV. So they go down to Best Buy. They don't have any money in their pocket, but they got a credit card. And Best Buy is happy to swipe that credit card for $1,500. And guess what? You get to take a brand new big screen TV home. And you get to watch the red zone package in your brand new big screen TV. What did you just do? You took $1,500 of your future and you spent it today. Steve, what I'm telling you is governments around Mm -hmm. the world have taken $57 trillion of our future and it's gone. So what is that going to do to global growth for the the next decades? It's going to significantly reduce global growth. It's highly deflationary. Okay, so really right now we're looking, you're saying it's going to be pretty flat from an interest rate point of view. So we're not going to get really big money from CDs, money markets. I mean, there's a, banks aren't going to be going up for anytime soon. I don't see interest rates doing much of anything for a very, very long time. So the first thing is debt. But you know what? A lot of people have been in debt. They've had credit mm-hmm. card debt. They've had student loans. What happens when you pay off your debt? What aren't you doing with your money? you're not spending it or saving it. See, the paying off of debt is also very deflationary. At the government level, it's called deleveraging. And what Mm -hmm. I'm telling you is governments around the world haven't even started to get out of debt. Now, how do governments get out of debt? There are three ways we only ever hear about two, raise taxes, cut spending. 
The third one is growth. Growth is the best, but we never hear about it. But what happens to an economy when you raise taxes and you cut spending? It strangles the economy. It's highly deflationary. Mm -hmm. So you got this massive debt that's deflationary. You got this deleveraging that hasn't even started. What I'm telling you is you can look forward to decades, decades of higher taxes and reduced government spending. Hasn't even started yet. Mm -hmm. And the third big D is demographics. We're getting old. Europe is old. Japan is very, very old. Steve, in Japan, they now sell more adult diapers and baby diapers. That's old. <laughs> China will get old before they get rich. Their one-child policy will come back to bite them. Well, when I'm thinking of how to combat this, I mean, I'm trying to say I'm just a little guy, and this effect of the world, the world's debt, is actually infringing on my lifestyle, and I don't even see it. Yeah, and the point here with the demographics is that old people don't spend money. Mm -hmm. So you got these 78 million baby boomers that, that, that it was about them and more and bigger and better, and they bought, 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 bought. Well, guess what? Those baby boomers are over the hill. They're over age 50. What happens at age 50? The kids move out, at least for a couple months, and your spending goes down every year after age 50. Now... There's some other things. Citibank says that there's a 65% probability of recession next year. There are other people who say it's even higher than that. You look around the world, Europe has negative interest rates, Steve. Hmm. Negative. You go to Switzerland, you put $100,000 in to buy a bond, guess what? You come back and you only get $98,000 out. You're not earning interest, you gotta mm -hmm. pay them interest. Mm -hmm. So think about this. We're raising interest when other countries have negative interest rates. What's that gonna do to the dollar? That's gonna drive the dollar up well, what does that do? It reduces our competitiveness. All the manufacturing people aren't going to buy our stuff. They're going to buy the Chinese stuff. They're going to buy the European stuff. And so that's mm -hmm. going to reduce global growth even more. So when the Fed raises interest rates in an overall, some places, negative interest rate environment, it's going to cause slowing down here. And I believe our rates are going to actually go down, not go up. Well, Tommy, on our next, our, our last raise was just about a week or so ago. Um, when I'm looking at the Fed doing that, I, I, I saw the market was kind of happy about it overseas. Well, they were for the first for day. For the first day, but yeah. But the next two days, they went down. Interest rates initially went up, and now guess what? Interest rates on the 10-year and the 30-year have gone down. It's it's working out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't tell the day-to-day -day changes, mm -hmm. all right? But, but I do believe that all these pressures are going to mm -hmm. cause some problems. Now, there's a couple books out there, Steve, that the, that the audience might want to read. The one on the left is called The Death of Money by Jim Rickards, and the one on the right is called The Demographic Cliff by Harry Dent. They both are predicting some pretty bad times, but mm -hmm. for very different reasons, okay? Jim Rickards has teamed up with Porter Stansberry and, and Ron Paul and mm -hmm. some of these, and they say that we're going to have hyperinflation, that the dollar's going to lose its reserve currency status. I don't believe that to be true, and I'll tell you why. Because whenever something bad happens over here, guess what? The dollar goes up. People come to us. We are mm -hmm. still the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry. Mm -hmm. So could we lose the reserve currency status at some time? Yes, we could. But is it imminent? They've been saying for five years it's going to happen imminently. Well, it hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen imminently. We're, we're not going to start using the euro. We're not going to start using Russian rubles or the Chinese renminbi. We're not all going to carry gold in our pocket and shave off a little to buy some bread. Mm -hmm. I do not see that happening. And Harry Dent is all about the, the debt, the demographics, the deleveraging. That is, we're going to face deflationary pressures, not inflationary pressures. And I will tell you, I'm solidly on Harry Dent's side on this one. I believe he's got the right thing. So, you know, to summarize it, are we going to have inflation? We could. We printed a lot of money. If we saw some money velocity, we could see some inflation. Are we going to see deflation? We could. Look at all these deflationary pressures. But Steve, I can't predict the future better than anybody else. So mm -hmm. here's what I tell people. Watch the bond market. The bond market predicts the future every single day. Well, if you look at the 30-year U.S. government bond, it's paying less than 3%. What is that predicting? The odds of any inflation or hyperinflation in this country are almost nothing. Mm -hmm. The 30-year the, the bond is telling you that interest rates are likely to stay low for a very, 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 very long time. Now, Tom, when you say that, I mean, am I saying in my lifetime, maybe then over the next 30 years, I'm not going to see 6% ever again. <laughs> You can't see 6%. If we saw 6% on, on $18 trillion of debt, that'd be over a trillion dollars a year just in interest. We would go into a Great Depression, and what happens in a Great Depression? Mm -hmm. Interest rates drop, they go negative. So Ben Bernanke says you're not going to see 4% for the rest of your life. I doubt you'll ever see 3% for the rest of your life. But again, I can't predict the future. What I'm telling you mm -hmm. is the 30-year U.S. government bond is predicting that interest rates are going to stay very, 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 very low for a very, very, very long time. And I'm right on board with that, and I do not. I don't care what the Fed does with their overnight rates. It's not going to affect most interest rates for a very long time.